So I will be speaking about the impact of conflicts and unrest on childhood cancer care and uh, education, uh, specifically the experience from our, our country, Ethiopia. Uh, I have no conflict of interest to disclose. And uh, when you see the country profile, Ethiopia uh, is located in the northeastern part of Africa, uh, basically, which is called the Horn of Africa. And in the neighboring countries like Eritrea, Somalia, Djibouti, and Sudan, and Kenya are there. And uh, it's one of the largest countries in Africa, the second most populous nation and ancient nation of Africa. And uh, <clears throat> officially called the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, uh, basically located in the Horn of Africa, and uh, most populous landlocked country in the whole world, and then second most populous nation on the African continent. And uh, it occupies a uh, total area of uh, more than 1 million, 100,000 square kilometers. And its capital and largest city is Addis Ababa, but the country is big and uh, um, there are uh, more than 80 ethnic groups and uh, more than 10 regions in the country. Population wise, according to World Bank report from 2022, uh, current population size is more than 123 million. And when you see the age structure, almost close to 60% of the population is, is young. Children and adolescents constitute 60% uh, of uh, the population, 63% of the population. It's a young nation. And uh, approximately 80% of the population lives in remote and rural area, making access to healthcare. More specifically, cancer care is distant and expensive for the majority of uh, both children and adults affected by uh, cancer because uh, there are only few cancer treatment centers in the country and the uh, majority of them they are uh, located in major cities and, and uh, uh, while the majority of the population is, is, is living in the countryside they have to travel hundreds of kilometers with limited infrastructure uh, which would make it uh, very complex even in a peaceful uh, situation to get uh, cancer treatment and access care. So limited amount of budget allocated for healthcare. Also, Ethiopia is a signatory for the Abuja Declaration to allocate at least 15% of the budget, annual budget for healthcare. It's still uh, allocating not more than 5% of its budget for healthcare while the country is uh, suffering from a series of uh, war on our situation. So uh, there's significant shortage of trained manpower, which would complicate the situation of childhood cancer care in Ethiopia. There are only few uh, trained personnel, few treatment sites, and then uh, most patients are, you know, are not having access, timely access for uh, cancer treatment. So when you see the cancer care in the country, cancer is one of the significant health problems in the country with a total annual estimate of uh, 71,000 cancer patients. This includes of uh, both children and adults, childhood and adult cancer. And uh, with this number comes the mortality. Uh, there is a huge survival gap in cancer care like any other uh, LMIC. Uh, Ethiopia is also uh, suffering from a, a very low uh, outcome of uh, cancer. Among this uh, annual case of uh, cancer, uh, more than 51,000 uh, will die uh, without getting proper treatment. So uh, there are five hospitals currently treating childhood cancer in the country for a population of more than uh, 100, more than 123 million population, which uh, uh, majority of which is uh, children and young adults and adolescents. Uh, these hospitals are centralized. All of them they are uh, situated, located in uh, major cities and uh, university hospitals. So uh, I don't know where, where did I stop, but so, so for regarding the cancer care in the country, uh, cancer care has continued to be the significant health problem uh, in, in the country with the total annual uh, incidence both for uh, children and adults, uh, more than 71,000 cancer patients are, are expected to be diagnosed. And with this comes a huge disparity. A significant number of them are dying without getting the proper care and treatment. More than 51,000 
which would make it close to 80% mortality. So there are five hospitals in, in the country currently treating children uh, with cancer. So two of them are located in, in the capital city. The third one is in, in the Romia region of Ethiopia and the southwestern part. And the other two are located in the west, uh, I mean, in the, in the northern part of the country. Where I'm speaking is Gondor University Hospital. It's situated in the northern west part. And the nord, in the northern most part is Makali Ida Referral Hospital, where there is uh, there has been huge, uh, uh, you know, civil war and, and, and unrest in this region of uh, Tigray and, and uh, Amhara. Uh, so when we see specifically pediatric oncology care, there is no uh, cancer registry in Ethiopia yet, except the one which is established for the uh, city of Addis Ababa, population-based cancer registry. But uh, extrapolating estimates from another East African country, Tanzania, Ethiopia probably had close to uh, 12,000 new cases of childhood cancer per year, according to published reports. And uh, annually, only 1,000 of them are uh, you know, visiting cancer treatment centers, which will make it to 10% of uh, uh, the, the, the expected cases to be diagnosed. This is this has to do mainly with, uh, with uh, you know, access to treatment. Uh, with that comes with high treatment abandonment rate. The published report suggested national treatment abandonment for uh, childhood cancer uh, is uh, 34%. programs at Addis Ababa University, Jima Medical Center, and University of Gondar, and all supported by childhood uh, uh, cancer treatment center and support groups from the U.S. and, and uh, other African countries. And it's a hybrid two-year fellowship program, heavily dependent on tele-lecture, case discussions, and teleconsultations. And uh, senior faculty is supposed to visit local training centers regularly from the U.S. and India and, and uh, Israel as well. So when we see the conflict and civil war going on in the country, uh, it all starts uh, in, 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 in the 20, end of 2019-2020. There <clears throat> has been uh, through a series of conflicts and civil unrest and uh, full-blown, full-fledged war uh, earlier in, in the, the Romea region and later uh, since November 2020 to November 2022 in the northern most part of the country in the Sigrai region, a deadly uh, war for two years. And uh, this has affected the healthcare immensely, including our, our hospital where we give uh, cancer treatment for children because it's a, a neighboring region. And our hospital was the, the, the primary, you know, trauma and casualty management. So since April 2023, our own region, Amara region, but we have limited access in the, in the, in the university hospital. That's why the internet is breaking so often. So uh, when we see the humanitarian response towards this crisis, yeah, mainly it's focused on, uh, you know, uh, supply of nutrition and, and uh, emergency trauma relief and then the control and prevention of infection, gender-based violence, and then prevention and management of uh, childhood cancer. Uh, has never been a priority for uh, humanitarian groups and agencies. Uh, impact of, when you see the impact of war on uh, childhood cancer care and generally cancer care in general, uh, we can see it, uh, you know, from our, our experience here, the, the, the war and the conflict has affected the mobility of our patients and their caregivers. Because of road blockade and uh, ground war, and it's very difficult to get access into treatment centers. Like I said before, uh, these hospitals are located in, in major cities, and, and um, especially this time of the year, uh, the war. Going war and conflict, it's very, uh, you know, difficult for families and patients to travel those uh, <clears throat> distant sites uh, to come to the treatment and to complete the treatment and new patients as well to come to the center and get treated. This has significantly affected our patient uh, flow and uh, has contributed for uh, a significant number of treatment abandonment and uh, early days. The other one is uh, internal displacement. 
patients and families because of uh, this casualty and in the war uh, they will move uh, to a safer place a relatively safe place and this would uh, result in uh, malnutrition increased number of comorbidities infectious disease on top of uh, the burden that they are having on, uh, on top of cancer this would complicate uh, uh, the, the, their uh, outcome as well and treatment and uh, there is significant supply interruption specifically chemotherapy and other uh, related uh, drugs since we are located uh, uh, more than 700 kilometers away from the capital city, uh, we are heavily dependent on supply from the, the federal government uh, of, uh, uh, drug supply agency for uh, drug supply, continuous drug supply. This uh, used to be on the ground transport, but uh, it's very difficult now uh, because uh, roads are blocked and uh, they are not safe anymore for uh, uh, ground transport. So there is significant interruption of uh, uh, drugs and adjuvants. And blood has been uh, a problem for uh, so many years now because of the ongoing conflict, trauma, patients and casualty, victims of war and soldiers. So everyone uh, is consuming a lot of blood supplies. So there is a critical shortage of blood. And uh, cancer care basically is expensive by its nature. And uh, because of uh, a lack of foreign currency and then government, uh, you know, suffering from uh, you know, economic and loss. So uh, it's very difficult to invest on uh, childhood cancer care from the ministry as well. When we see uh, from the psychosocial aspect of it, uh, children, they will lose their support either by the direct effect of the war, some of the the caregivers and, and the family members will join the urban struggle and then there will be loss of uh, <clears throat> their support and then that has affected in lack of support and treatment interruption and then diversion of resource limited operating rooms specifically for solid tumor management because our center has been a major treatment center for uh, mass casualty and uh, victims of war so uh, the cancer has been a uh, less priority because operating rooms will be, you know, busy in managing uh, trauma patients and uh, casualty management. So there will be delayed inter uh, you know, intervention of surgery uh, for children who need uh, surgery as part of their treatment. And uh, with, with this significant uh, uh, civil war conflict and unrest, there is a significant attrition of health workers, which has resulted in... Uh, we has already we had already a shortage of manpower that has precipitated through this process and there was a significantly increased treatment abandonment rate there was a baseline 34 percent we haven't yet published articles i will not mention numbers but uh, this has resulted in significant increment in treatment abandonment when we see the impact of war on oncology training uh, our center has been one of the three uh, pediatric oncology training centers in collaboration with uh, our partners in, in, in US, India, and Israel. Uh, we had this uh, uh, oncology training in Addis and in Jima and as well in Gondar. So because we are very few pediatric oncologists for a country of 120 million, we are only nine. So uh, it's very difficult for us to handle all this uh, cancer care and treatment and education. So we partner with our, our collaborators. So uh, they, they, they do a lot of distance learning using uh, e-learning modules. So uh, since uh, this war has erupted, it's very difficult uh, to get internet access and uh, to continue the education, the fellowship program. And it's also difficult for our senior consultants to travel uh, because activities and teaching so because of uh, ongoing conflict and war it's very difficult for senior faculty to travel uh, uh, to, to, to our place and it's uh, hard to get teleconsultation for complex cases uh, our center is a very young center only five years of experience and uh, ourselves we, we don't have that much experience in managing complex and difficult cases we, we used to take uh, consultations and, and the guidance from uh, senior faculty abroad, uh, but now it's very challenging to get those helps so that our patients will get the best of it. Uh, and there's also limited exposure for, for our fellows because of decreased number of cases visiting a center. 
and then uh, that's very difficult to host and attend conferences and seminars. Uh, our university hospital is one of the oldest uh, medical school in, in the country, and uh, we used to host and attend conferences and seminars, not on oncology, but uh, on different topics. But now it's very challenging to conduct those activities.